Hello and welcome to the 22nd episode of Stay Under My Friends. In today's episode, I'm going to be giving you guys a very, very, very simple explanation of string theory, so don't freak out. It's, I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm not going to go into the, any of the math today, but if you guys want me to go into the math, I'll make another episode, and I will make another episode explaining string theory, but the reason we're talking about basic string theory today is because we're also going to be talking about the 11 dimensions set forth in string theory and what they are. Uh, the idea for this episode came from my friend Angie and one of our subscribers, whose username is rayamat one so thank you guys for this idea. Um, so to give you an explanation of string theory, um, just a really basic one, imagine that everything in the universe, including, is made of atoms, okay? Now, the atoms are made of subatomic particles, and the subatomic particles are made of quarks and whatnot, and other things. But string theory proposes that instead, that what all of these things are made of are these tiny cosmic strings. And these, because the reason why this works is because if you look at an electron, electron is just a dot. It's just one point in space. And all that that can do is it can just move. It can't do anything else. That's all it can do. But if it were a cosmic string bent in on itself, making it into a loop, what it can do is it can oscillate, it can rotate, it can orbit, it can do whatever the hell, it can do so many more things instead of just being able to move. So if that were true, that would mean that these cosmic strings make up electrons, quarks, protons, everything that makes up the things that make us up, that make up everything. It's really intense. Um, so that's an elementary explanation of string theory. Um, now I'm going to tell you about the 11 different dimensions that are set forth in string theory. First, we have the zero dimension, and that is simply a dot. No number can apply to this dimension, to this space in this dimension, because it's just that, z it's zero. There is nothing. It is, it's an absence of anything while still being something, if that makes sense. It's quantum physics, so that works. The, first, the other, the next one is the first dimension, which is just a line, and only one number can apply to this because it's only one space in, it's only one space, you get it? So it's just a line. So you need these two dots, but only one number can apply to each of these dots. Then you have the second dimension, which now you have a plane. So you just have this one, you have one plane, but two, two numbers apply to this because now you have to have your x and your y as any of us who have done uh, algebra or anything like that know. Then we have the dimension that all of us know so well, which is the third dimension, which is three numbers apply to it because now you have your x and your y and you also have your z. <laughs> that was kind of cool. Um, yeah, stay near my friends in three dimensions now. <laughs> um, Anyway, so that's the third dimension. The fourth dimension is space-time. So the third dimension is space, the fourth dimension is space-time. So just an interesting thing that uh, I heard from an astrophysicist, I can't remember which one, but he said that if you ever were to see a fourth dimensional being, you wouldn't see them like we see each other because they wouldn't be three-dimensional. What you would see is you would see simultaneously the youngest that, that person ever was and the oldest that, that person will ever be and all of the spots in between those two all at once and you would see that while you were looking at them so that's kind of trippy um the fifth dimension is the first dimension that you have to start uh taking factoring in possible worlds what i mean by this is now you're looking at the way that uh Michio Kaku uh, describes it is that you have all of these different uh, vibrating membranes floating around in space and each of these membranes is a universe and in, once you start going past the fifth dimension you have to start uh, taking these other membranes uh, or brains or p brains uh, into account you can't just look at ours so the fifth dimension you have to start uh, considering some of these other ones and then in the sixth dimension you have uh, it's basically a plane of all possible worlds, and so it's kind of like the second dimension where uh, you have a plane of where any dots can be on, on that plane. Now you're talking about a plane with possible universes instead of dots. So it's, it's kind of like we're getting bigger in scale, but we're really not. We're talking about the same size, technically. Um, the seventh dimension, uh, you would have all access 
if you were in the seventh dimension, you would have access to all of the possible worlds that have different starting points. So like our universe had the starting point of the Big Bang, technically. And so let's say uh, in our universe, we had the Big Bang when we had it and it was the Big Bang. In this universe, they had the Big Bang, but it didn't take place at the same time. The, our universe had the starting point of the Big Bang. So it's a little bit different. And then this universe didn't have the Big Bang. It had the small splat. I don't know. It's just coming up with names. Um, basically, that's what that is. The seventh dimension gives you access to all possible starting points for universes. The eighth dimension would give you a complete history of all possible of all of the universes, which means that you would have different levels of infinity in all of in all of these because you're looking at the history of the universe and the universe. <laughs> all of these different universes have different lengths, but they're all still going, which means that they all equal infinity, but they're different levels of infinity. And if you're confused about that. Go back to my episode where I talk about different levels of infinity, or check out Number File because they did an episode about it. It's really interesting. Um, the ninth dimension is exactly the same as the eighth dimension, and the fact that it gives you a complete history of all the possible universes, but in all of those possible universes, they have different laws of physics. So gravity would be different, and the strong force would be different, and the weak force would be different, and the laws of thermodynamics don't necessarily apply to anything. It's crazy. Um, the tenth dimension, uh, which is the last one, so it's actually technically the eleventh dimension, but because the first dimension is the zeroth dimension, you have to consider it as the tenth dimension. Sorry, I know that's a little confusing. The tenth dimension is... Every single universe, every single moment in time, every single possible moment is represented. So if you can imagine it, it is there. Because just like in the ninth dimension, the laws of physics in all these different uh, possible universes, they are completely different. They don't have to be the same. So if you if you're imagining a sky where the world where a world where the sky is pink, then it's there. If you're imagining a world where elephants can fly, or a world without elephants because you don't like them, or a world without clowns because I hate clowns, it's there. Uh, then again, there's also, by the same logic, there's also a world completely ruled by clowns there, and that is fracking frightening. Um, anyway, that is the 11 dimensions uh, and a brief explanation of each of them. That is also an elementary explanation of string theory. If string theory proves to be wrong, these 11 dimensions kind of fall apart. Well, all of them after the fourth dimension, they sort of fall apart because they all fit together. String theory and these uh, the 11 dimensions, bit perfect. Um, I will do another episode where I go deeper into string theory if you guys want me to. Um, other than that, all I can think of is... Subscribe to the channel. It's a good channel. Keep commenting. Keep giving me ideas for new episodes. Thank you to Angie and Rayamat01 again for this for the idea for this episode. And share this video with everyone you know. And other than that, all I can think of is stay nerdy, my friends.